On there, folks. Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Wednesday, August 9th, 2023. It's about 1215 uh, in the afternoon here in California. Latest activity on the map. Let's go ahead and check the globe here. 4.5 in our quiet zone. Looks like that's just starting to fill in slightly. This has been uh, awfully quiet here over the past couple days. Normally, Solomon Islands area, Papua New Guinea, uh, Vanuatu area uh, are very active, but uh, we're lacking earthquake activity here. But uh, for now, a little bit of movement coming in uh, into the Papua New Guinea area with a 4.5, the latest quake there on the map. Now, earlier we did have some act, uh, activity here into the Mexico region, somewhat of a larger earthquake, 5.8, 110 kilometers deep. Now, this is in the uh, Middle America Trench here. This is the area that has been showing that swarm over here around the Gulf of Fonseca area over the past couple weeks, although it has died down slightly. I'm still kind of curious as to what the uh, uh, all this movement was about. I mean, there was a lot of earthquake activity within that Gulf, and... Um, with no subsequent uh, volcanic activity or any larger scale movement from that uh, big swarm. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. Uh, again, 5.8 earthquake showing up about 2 o'clock in the morning. And I was observing that there on the Yellowstone map. Um, there is the 5.9 in Tonga from yesterday. Just about ready to drop off the map or the graph here. Uh, this is the Yellowstone Seismograph Station there in Wyoming. I'm just kind of showing you guys the signatures from these earthquakes and what I believe um, these folks have done in order to pick up these earthquakes that are not quite super large, but still showing up pretty drastically on the graphs. So 5.9 there in Tonga from yesterday, 5.8 Mexico area, along with a couple smaller earthquakes showing up there on the graph. Now, I believe these guys have amplified... Uh, the seismograph stations here. That's why it's picking up these uh, very far distant earthquakes and some of these You know 5.9 couple thousands of miles away are showing up like they're just really close nearby now what they're doing is obviously amplifying the uh, signal so to speak uh, far as the uh, readings on this graph uh, Which is good because then we can basically see any type of small uh, very small microquake activity that's stirring up there at Yellowstone. And there's a couple, but it uh, looks like here following that movement uh, this morning as well. A couple small quakes, nothing big. But just FYI, because I was mentioning it last night in my update, thinking that this may have been a bigger earthquake than a 5.9, but it makes sense now uh, that these guys have uh, pretty much just amplified the seismograph stations here along, looks like mostly around the northwestern corner of the park. It did show up here around Parker Peak, the eastern section of the park as well. Uh, but as you can see, uh, local earthquake activity is kept to a minimum right now. Looks like there was maybe a, you know, again, a little small handful of earthquake activity there at Yellowstone, but overall pretty quiet. All right, uh, let's see. We did have some movement off the coast of Oregon here. Once again, the Blanco Fracture Zone has been showing a little bit of uh, seismic activity, including a 4.1, uh, roughly an hour or so prior to that 4.1. We had a 3.1 within that same area along this Blanco Fracture Zone region. So we'll watch this pretty closely here. It's been showing some uh, elevated movement here across the last seven days or so there's the uh some of the earthquake activity there across the region uh, but it seems like these are getting a little bit bigger the last one a 4.1 so we'll continue to watch this area around the blanco fracture zone that does have a lot to do with the plate stress out here against the um, um cascadia subduction zone in this case it's going to be the juan de fuca plate which is this segment right here surrounded by the red line and uh, north american plate over here of course the cascadia mega thrust sits within this lengthy subduction zone very dangerous area as well tremor activity has been relatively minor uh, across this region here recently the yesterday's tremor activity 40 epicenters here of uh, tremor now this activity shows that it's on land on the map but it's technically underneath this land into the subduction zone level of course subduction zone begins right offshore here and then further right on the map as you go down deeper into the levels of the sub subduction zone, you run into the, uh, well, the strain, obviously, a little bit further upstream from the trimmer, which occurs down there about 45 kilometers deep or so. 
And uh, this has just been a little pattern of quietness here. We've seen quietness spells before in the past. Uh, looks like 2019 or so is when we had a pretty good quiet spell. Uh, what it means? Well, it's just, who knows? A lot of times these trimmers down there uh, get locked. Uh, you know, we just don't see that slippage going on way down into the subduction zone like we normally do uh, during the trimmer event. So things get stuck. And um, sometimes we'll see earthquake activity uh, upstream or right around the trimmer activity zone down below. Uh, that could be a little bit on the larger side, uh, larger size uh, into that subduction zone, well below this area. But uh, either way, just kind of keeping an eye on it, seeing how uh, it plays out. As far as earthquake activity goes, up at the Cascades. Well, we were watching some swarming going on here off the Seattle Fault to see if we had anything today. Looks like we did see a couple more earthquakes after midnight, 0.6 and a 1.0. Now, those are not uh, big quakes whatsoever, but it has been a little sequence of activity uh, there off the eastern segment of the Seattle Fault Zone. One earthquake there at Mount Rainier, a zero. Okay. <laughs> A zero to report. I'm not for sure if they just messed up or it's been reviewed. So I, I don't know. <laughs> Go figure. That's a little weird one. A uh, little bit of activity across Mount St. Helens. Mostly smaller microquake movement. And uh, looks like one earthquake here. Outside of the Klamath Falls region around Mountain Lakes. 1.4, 17 kilometers deep. Northern California. And the train to go along with it here. It's, it's, looks like it's coming into town. A um, little activity across the Sierra Nevada today. One earthquake off the San Andreas Fault in the Bay Area. 2.2, 11 kilometers deep, deep. Now the Bay Area has been pretty quiet here uh, over the past week or so. Only very minor movement here across the San Francisco Bay if you look at this area here. Uh, along the plate boundary, it's very quiet for that type of, uh, well, for this area in general. So, could be seeing some things building up here potentially for some uh, uptick. Continue to watch that zone. Uh, the creeping segment here of the San Andreas Fault, very minimal movement there. And the Southern California area, no major swarming going on. No major unusual activity. Look at the 2.5 map and above. Shows one earthquake there from yesterday, 2.8 Petrolia, just off the coast here in Northern California. Uh, all right, Idaho did see some activity stirring up. Um, looks like late last night, 3.1. A couple other smaller quakes there throughout the uh, area of Idaho and Montana. Down here across the uh, Texas area, outside of Pecos. Latest one shows a 2.1. This area has shown some twos and threes out here in the oil fields recently all right there's that five pointer down in the mexico area uh doesn't look like we see anything uh stirring up out here following that movement we'll continue to keep an eye on the middle america trench west coast area as well south america very small twos and threes looks like some deeper movement quakes there from yesterday south sandwich trench 4.8 coming in pretty recent earthquake there 4.8 uh, it's going to be on the northern edge where we've seen most of the activity here recently over the last seven days or so has been confined here <clears throat> with a couple fours and fives. Well, I'd say mainly fives and a couple fours. Uh, we did have a couple upper 5.7s there around the South Sandwich Trench. Again, the northern edge here of that subduction zone. The Atlantic Ocean, clear and calm. Not a whole lot showing up here, even on the Earthquake 3D globe. Across the Mediterranean, things look uh, fairly typical across the area today. Turkey region, seeing some earthquake activity. And um, let's see if we've got any further movement down here. That's from yesterday in the uh, Tanzania area, 4.8. Let's see here, one earthquake uh, around the Himalayas, 4.7 earthquake showing up here early this morning. A couple hours ago, 13 kilometers deep. This is one, one area where we haven't seen a super large quake in a while. And that zone can definitely see uh, some large damaging earthquakes. Looks, looks like there's some threes in that mix as well. There across the Himalayas. Uh, Kurokamachaka and the Japan Trench relatively quiet. 
deeper movement quakes there across the Mariana Trench. That's going to be a 5.6, it looks like here, uh, into the area around Guam, 2 o'clock in the morning. This one's pretty deep. So deeper activity, obviously, trying to work its way around the Mariana Plate or the uh, Filipino Plate around the Mariana Trench. Uh, we'll watch for some further movement potentially upstream or right around the western edge here of that Filipino Plate. Uh, things could be kicking up following this deeper movement. For now, pretty good cluster across the Indonesia Islands area. And there's that 4.5. Around Papua New Guinea, we'll expect this to fill in as well. Uh, I think there's enough strain built up here uh, to see some further earthquake activity. Pending it's, I mean, it's obviously been quiet here for a little bit. Uh, New Zealand, a couple smaller earthquakes shown up there on the Earthquake 3D globe. And uh, we'll just give a quick glance here at the Earthquake 3D globe, or the uh, uh, GeoNet servers. Let's see what's going on there down around New Zealand. Four-pointer from yesterday. Uh, earthquake drums. We'll check this here real quick and see what we got. Most of the time, this will tell us right off the bat what's going on as far as earthquake activity goes. Here's that four-pointer from yesterday. Just about ready to drop off the 24-hour threshold mark there on the graph. But as you can see, New Zealand looks very quiet. This is some type of technical interference here within this graph across that area of South Island, New Zealand. Uh, one earthquake here into the Fiji area from yesterday, 528 kilometers deep. Alaska area is uh, very minimal for the most part, just all microquake activity. And the Big Island doesn't look like there's too much activity taking place here. And it looks as though, let's see, did they? I'm going to see if they up dated this uh, 3.4 it's still underneath automatic status that's kind of odd because there was a an odd earthquake south of the big island yesterday right about the time that 5.9 struck in tonga again yesterday it's still up on the map nobody's reviewed it uh and i say weird because it's in an area that doesn't really see too much earthquake activity out here uh, and if that's the case and these things may be uh uh, getting active across the sea mounts, but it's still under automatic status, meaning that uh, no one's reviewed it. And uh, who knows if it's a legit earthquake or not. Could be a phantom quake there, phantom seismic uh, signature from that 5.9 there in the Tonga area yesterday, which looks like, uh, has it already been 24 hours? Let me double check here. It has, all right. Um, let's see what else we got here. I think that's about it. Uh, Puerto Rico area. Most of this movement here from yesterday. Notice the timestamps here. One earthquake this morning, a 2.6, but uh, things are quieting down here across the area of the Puerto Rico region. Solar weather activity. Well, pretty much come to a flat line here now that the active regions are out on the, uh, <clears throat> the western limb. Yeah, I meant to do that. Um, notice this area down here, this line showing sea flare activity. It's very minimal. We're even, we're even dipping down into the B class here, which is uh, you know about as minimal as you can get for the most part. So let's look at these sunspot regions, see if we have any growth since yesterday. That one just completely disappeared. Uh, this one right here looks like it is gaining a little bit of steam. Notice the uh, complex structures here, different colors popping up around the main core. That could be an active sunspot region here pretty soon, uh, very soon. And uh, down here, not quite as advanced as this one's growing, but we'll continue to watch both of these, I believe, as they are gaining a little bit of steam. And if they're going to do anything, they better do it quickly because uh, they, it is center disk directly facing the Earth on the Earth-Sun plane. And uh, anything that does blast off will be uh, almost 100% directly Earth-directed. Uh, uh, around the eastern limb of the Sun, not a whole lot. A couple newer regions coming around, but it uh, doesn't look like there's too much activity. So here is the UV filter ray. Notice this sunspot that I was just mentioning, brightening up, getting all sorts of magnetic lines going here across the area a lot of arches within those sunspot regions or in the sunspot cores and uh, we'll just continue to watch this area uh, for some flaring activity now this sunspot down here let me check this one out here again Let's see which one that is 
looks like right here maybe a small developing core you can kind of see the different colors here but not definitely not uh, noteworthy compared to this area all right uh, total flare threat right now looks like 99% um, chance for a C flare M flare at 55 X flare around 10% chance proton event is still going on today notice that polar region still being affected uh, by some solar protons no major auroras on the uh, forecast for now even that last g2 class uh, storm g2 storm that they had the forecasted was a complete dud never really materialized at all uh, we we're only going to get a glancing blow from a couple cmes that were earth somewhat directed away from the earth but uh yeah they never never even touched the earth whatsoever all right, weather outlook today here. Kind of a big day for tornadoes out in the area of uh, looks like Missouri and Arkansas region. Got a 10% hatched area. Now, the hatched area is the one that you need to be mostly concerned about because that is uh, a 10% or greater probability of an EF2 to EF5. Now, those are strong tornadoes. So if you do get uh, a um, storm brewing out there with rotation, and it does manage to produce a tornado. That tornado could uh, thrive in the environment there within that hatched area to become uh, up to an EF5 tornado within about 25 miles of a point. So just a heads up, if you're out there around the Missouri and the Arkansas border area, looks like that's where things are going to kick off. Uh, and I believe they're currently kicking off. Let me double check the uh, current weather warning map here. I was looking at these earlier. Um, not 100% not certain this shows all of them. It looks like a thunderstorm watch out here. Got a flood watch as well. Let's check out the radar and see what's going on. I know we got some uh, storms brewing up already out there. There's supposed to be a couple different bands that uh, come through this area. Right now it just looks like some scattered thunderstorm activity out there in that region not really seeing anything uh, major popping up but i believe it's supposed to amplify here um throughout the late afternoon time period let's see what these guys are stating here um there's a lot a lot of wording in here not going to read it all Uh, let's see. It looks like uh, upscale growth is likely this evening as low to mid-level flow field strength in the head of the shortwave trough tracking towards the middle Miss Mississippi Valley. Uh, so yeah, we got a couple different waves coming in throughout the afternoon and the late afternoon, early evening time period uh, across those regions there. So uh, there's a lot going on here on the map. Aside from that 10% tornado hatched area, we got some big time wind events as well. Talking about 65 knots or greater within 25 miles of a point, specifically around the same areas as the uh, tornado potential, hail potential in there as well. Look at that 30% zone. Uh, talking about maybe two inch di diameter hail or larger within 25 miles of a point within this hatched area. And of course, you know, there's a larger area surrounding that, so any thunderstorm that does pop up could produce some large hail in general. So just a heads up, folks. It's going to be going to be a very active day. It's already active, but I think it's going to ramp up throughout the afternoon and early evening time period. So stay weather aware. All right, uh, what else we got? Anything major going on here? How's the seismograph stations looking? A little spike, a couple spikes there across the Barrett station, by the way which is in Southern California. Doesn't look like any big earthquake activity. It looks like just a couple small quakes here. Uh, not being reported, but uh, there is a little bit showing up on the seismograph. So, All right, folks, have a good day. We'll keep you guys uh, updated if anything major comes up here. Take care. I'll catch you guys back here tonight, I believe. Have a good one.